Okay, we have uh, now seen well different methods to solve uh, lot sizing problems. We first look at that, the two extreme methods, uh, lot for lot, which means uh, produce exactly what you need in each uh, period. The produce once, which means that you are producing everything in the first period and then storing to the period you actually need the inventory. We try to adjust the EOQ model and uh, use that uh, the EOQ uh, the size uh, for a corresponding uh, uh, fixed demand problem to decide which period to um, set up production. And we have seen the silver mill methods, which was able to find a better solution than the others by well looking at the average cost, well, looking myopic, one period ahead every time, and find where the average cost uh, will be at the lowest. Now we will see one or two more uh, heuristics, and the first one is actually the lowest one here, the least unit cost, and then I will come back to the part period balancing uh, after that. But all these three heuristics, the silver meal, the least unit cost, and the part period balancing is uh, a part of, of your uh, assignment three in uh, problem number four. Uh, but as I mentioned, uh, the least unit cost heuristics will uh, use much of the same ideas as the silver meal method. But now, instead of dividing by the number of periods, we will divide by the number of units. So here, we will divide by R1 plus R2 and plus up to period number J. This is the general formula, uh, which means if you produce only for the first period, you should divide by 18, which is the demand for that period. If you are producing for two periods, you should divide the cost by 18 plus 30, which is the number of uh, units for the periods you want to spend. So let's now try to use this least unit cost method on the same example and see what will, will the result be. Will we be able to find an even better solution than the silver mill heuristic uh, showed us? <coughs> Uh, well, least unit cost, L-U-C, least unit cost. Uh, again, we start only looking at one period, so the C of 1 will be the setup cost of 80, but no storage cost, because if you are producing only for one period, you will produce exactly 18 units, which is the demand. So we have to divide 80 by 18, and we will then get um, the value of 4.44. And if we are producing for two periods, the C of two, then we will have the setup cost in the first period and we are storing 30 items from period 1 to period 2. 30 multiplied by 2 and now instead of dividing by 2 we should divide by the number of items in total which is 18 plus 30. And then you will have the unit cost, which will be 2.92, which is smaller than the previous one, then we should continue. The C of 3, well, then we are producing 18 plus 30 plus 42, a total of 90. We are while well, we will have a setup cost of 80, we will have store uh, holding cost for 
30 items in one period and we will have holding cost of 42 items in two periods. Divide by the total number of units, 18 plus 42 plus 30, total of 90. And now the least or the unit cost in this case will be 3.42. Three point forty two is larger than the previous one, which means that we should actually stop here. Produce for two periods because this is when we get the least unit cost. So, as we also saw in the silver mill uh, uh, solution formed by the silver mill strategy, here we should produce forty eight, store thirty of them to the next period, and then have a new setup in period number three. And when we now look at period <coughs> number three, first option will be to produce exactly 42 units. You will have a setup cost of 80, and 80 divided by 42 will then be 1.92. Now 1.90. Next option, the C of two. 80 divided by, or, or of course 80, and then you have to store 5 units in one period. So 80 plus 5 at a cost of 2, divided by 42 plus 5, which will give us a total of 1.92. And here we can see that this solution will differ from the silver meal solution, because here we find that we should only produce 42 items in period number three and then have a new setup in period number four. So then look at period number four. First option 80. Setup cost of 80, no holding cost. The number of units here is only five. <coughs> And 80 divided by 5 should be 16. Next option, include period number 5, the C of 2, which means <coughs> setup cost of 80 and holding cost of 20 items in one period. Divide by the total number of units, 5 plus 20. And this will give us a unit cost of 4.8, which is, of course, much smaller than 16. And now this was the last period in the time horizon, which means that we should stop here. So in period number 4, produce 25. Store 20 of them in one period, and then you have nothing left, uh, and you don't need to produce in period number five. And then we have a new strategy, which, again, we need to find the cost to compare with the other strategies. Cost here. Still, we have three setups. We have setup period one, period three, and period four. So the cost will be three times 80. And now the storage cost, or the holding cost, will be 30 items here, 20 items here, a total of 50, at a cost of 2. And this will be 340, so we can see that the LUC heuristic found actually a solution which, which was uh, poorer than the silver meal and also poorer than the EOQ. But this doesn't mean that this heuristic is, uh, is not so good because in some other example this might even find a better solution than the others because all these are heuristics and they are dependent on the different the situation you are in and, uh, and uh, the product and the actual, uh, actual demand. So 
even if in this case silver meal is better than the least unit cost, it doesn't mean that this will be the case in, in all other possible examples. So now we have seen, well, even one more. We have actually five different ways of uh, solving this uh, uh, lot sizing problem. Uh, I will present one more heuristic before we look at the LP or the uh, exact optimal solution. So, So then let's uh, have a look at this method here called the part period balancing. And the idea behind this method is uh, rather to find the closest balance between the two different uh, cost uh, elements. Uh, so we want to find or identify uh, how many units we should produce to get storage cost which is closest to the setup cost, in this case, 80. So now let's look at this, the same problem. We now can make a table. The order horizon, well, one period, two period, three, we might even take four, but uh, also here we should continue in until we, uh, we got also this is a myopic uh, uh, heuristic, which will only take one period uh, ahead at a time and then look and, and compare the cost. Uh, so here, holding cost, if you are now storing uh, or producing For one period, of course, you will have no holding cost. You're producing 18 units in period number one, and you will not store anything because you need a new setup in period number two. But if you now are producing for two periods, then the holding cost will be 30 multiplied by two. You produce 48, you store 30 of them, in one period. So 30 multiplied by 2 will be a total of 60. Holding cost of 60. The third option, produce 90, store 30 of them in one period, and store 42 of them in two periods. Total cost will, well, this will be the same, 30 multiplied by 2 plus 42 multiplied by 2 and multiplied by 2 periods. This will now be the holding cost if you are storing, uh, if you are producing for all the three first period in period number one. And this will be 228. And now we should choose, we should compare the holding cost to the setup cost, and we should choose the number of periods to produce for, which is closest, which gives holding cost closest to the setup cost, which is of course here. 60 is much closer to 80 than the other option, which is 228. So also here we find that we should produce 48 here, no production in period two, and store 30 of them in one period. And then start again from period number three. Well, starting from period number three, the first option, produce 42 
and which is exactly the demand, then you don't have any holding cost at all because you are using all of the items in the first uh, period. Next option, produce 47, store 5 to the next period. Then you will have holding cost, which is 5, multiplied by 2, which is 10. And then the third option here, 42 plus 5 plus 20 will be to produce 67, store 5 of them in one period and store 20 of them in two periods. So the holding cost will be 5 multiplied by 2 plus 20 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 periods, which is 90. And now we can uh, compare. What is the closest? Because here, using this technique, we should always continue until we get holding cost, which is larger than the setup cost. And then we should compare the two closest options, the one which is lower than the holding cost and the one which is higher than the holding cost, and choose the one which is closest. And of course here, 90, it's much closer to 80 than 10, which means in period number three, using the part period balancing technique, we should produce for three periods, a total of 67. Store 25 in this period, use five of them, or no production here and no production here, but we should use five in period number four. Then you have 20 left. And then these 20 will meet exactly the demand in period number five. So now we have another strategy. This strategy will have only two setups. And which means we have two times 80, but we have more holding costs because here 30 plus 25 plus 20 will be 75, a total of 75 multiplied by the cost of 2. And this will be 2 multiplied by 80, 160 plus 150 will be 310. So here part period balancing will give us a solution for this small example, which is, has a cost of 310, which is actually the same as the silver meal solution, but not the same solution. So here we have two solutions with the equal quality. They will be equally good according to the, the costs, but they will have, uh, well, they will, will <coughs> look different. In the silver meal solution, we had three setups. Here we had only two setups, but then of course we will have more storage cost. Question? Why did you choose 90? Uh, because 90 is closer to 80 than 10. The idea here is to choose the number of periods to produce for where the holding cost is closest to the setup cost. So here it is so more or less the same idea as, the, as we have seen in the EOQ uh, formula that we should try to balance the two cost elements. Uh, if question? The, if the order of horizon had been 70, yeah. so they were 10 both sides, what should we have chosen? Uh, well, uh, then it's uh, up to you. There, there's no exact rules of this. And of course, this is a myop this is also a myopic uh, uh, heuristic, uh, which is not necessarily the optimal one. Because after one week, we might also get the demand for period number six, and then recalculating, we find that maybe this was not the best solution anyway, because the new information will give us some well some adjustments or some, some possible adjustment to uh, to the best uh, strategy. The, the name. The part period balancing. So now we have seen that well, the three three strategies you you should also try in your assignment is the silver meal, the least unit cost, and the part period balancing, which are all heuristics, and 
as you can see, they will give different solutions. What? I didn't. We, some, well, I, I didn't know when we started. We, we don't know how many periods we need. So in this case, three was enough. But maybe in, uh, well, in your, uh, your problem in the assignment, you have 10 weeks, I think, and then you might also have four or five as, as options. So three heuristic methods, th three different solutions. Uh, and of course, this is small examples. It's very easy to find the optimal solution. Uh, we have seen three, well, we have seen two solutions with the, the same quality found by different uh, heuristics. Uh, when the problems get larger, it's not always possible to find or pro uh, the proven optimal solution. Uh, and also, since the in real life, the problems are dynamic. You will always get new information. You have here a time horizon of five. You have some examples where you might have a time horizon of 10. Uh, and well, uh, new information will come all the time. And then you need to adjust the plans according to new information. But at least the first decision here is how many, uh, how many periods you should produce for, and then uh, after, in period three, you might have new information and you might need to set up a, a new plan, which could change this, uh, uh, <coughs> could change this, uh, this uh, optimal uh, strategy. So. Uh, but now, uh, well, in, in real life, you also have, well, you might have problems where you have billions of billions, different possibilities, and then heuristics like this is not uh, well, they, they are uh, able to use them to find acceptable solution, but they are not necessarily uh, the optimal or best one because you, you cannot always uh, compare with all the other possible options. <coughs> but now let's look at how we can use Lingo or LP programming to define these type of lot sizing problems and then try to solve them to optimality. But as mentioned, the optimality is uh, dependent of that the information you are feeding the program with is correct. And if the, this information is uncertain, or also you get some new information later, it is not uh, always necessary that, that the optimal solution will be, be the best solution because the, it might be, be changed. <coughs> so, uh, you might also have seen the PowerPoint file, which has been in front of for a while. The the modeling lingo, which we will now have a look at. And uh, what we now want to do is to try to define or find a formulation of this lot sizing problem, which can be used to, uh, to model in lingo and find the optimal solution. Uh, and if we now try to, to find a mathematical formulation here, we know that this is a minimization problem. We want to minimize the costs. And we remember, well, we can call this function, see? Uh, we remember that what we want to minimize was the setup cost and the holding cost. So here we can define this as a sum for all the given periods. <coughs> Start from period number one and up to period number t, which is the last period in the time horizon. And 
use the setup cost. And theoretically, we can have a different setup cost in the different period. So we can just add the index of t. But in our examples, this the setup cost will be the same in the, se in, in the different periods. We had a setup cost of 80 in our small example, which was independent of which period you had the setup. But theoretically, you can have different, uh, different uh, costs for different periods. And we will multiply the setup cost with what we now define as the Greek letter delta, which is a binary variable which decides whether you will have a setup or not in period number t. So if you have a setup, this delta variable has the value of 1. If you don't have a setup, it has the value of 0. This means we will sum for all the t periods the setup cost for the number of periods you will have a setup. And in addition, we need to add the holding cost, which also theoretically can be different. So that's why we also can use a T here. But in our examples, we have the same holding cost. We had two in the previous example. Storing one item of inventory in one period gave us a cost of two multiplied by the size of the stock uh, in period number t. So this is the uh, objective function in this case. What we want to minimize, we can also include uh, in this uh, document, it is also included um, the uh, production cost. It is a, uh, well, it is a constant, so we haven't uh, calculated this, but if this is a constant. If the C very have different value in, in the different periods, we can also include this one. And then X will be the total demand uh, for, for, uh, for period number T. So this is the function. This is the objective function. And this might will be in our, um, our example. This will be a constant, so it is omitted. But is in this document, it is also included, but with a given uh, fixed uh, uh, cost. So here we have the setup cost multiplied by the number of periods you will have a setup, and the hauling cost multiplied by the number of units, which is stored from one period to the next one. Uh, but as we remember from the aggregate planning uh, problem we have solved to optimality earlier, we also need to include some uh, constraints. Otherwise, if you are minimizing without any constraints, you will always get zero. So in this problem, we include constraints, subject that. We want to minimize the uh, objective function, subject to. First, the inventory balance, which means that the production in period number t plus the inventory in period number t minus 1. This is how much you are producing. This is how much you had on stock from the previous period minus the inventory in period number t should be equal to the demand in period number t. So you should, well, the production should meet the demand, and if not, you have to adjust the stock like this. So this is now the balancing constraints uh, between the production, the size of the stock and the demand in each period. In addition, we will need to define in this problem, or in this uh, LP problem, that uh, x of t, the production in period number t, should be smaller than or equal to. And we can here define 
the maximum amount to produce will not exceed the total of the demand in the time horizon. This is the sum of the demand in all the periods in the time horizon. This is the maximum. You should never produce more than that. But in addition, this constraint will well, should be multiplied by this variable, the delta variable in period number t. Because this means if the delta variable is 1, you can produce up to this particular number, which was 115 in our example. If the delta variable is 0, the production should be less than or equal to 0, which of course is 0. You should not produce at all. So this is necessary to make sure to tell the computer that here we should not produce anything in the periods where you don't have setup costs. And at last, we need to include the binary constraint for the delta variables. Can be written like this mathematically. This is the element of the set 0 of 1. So the delta variables are have either the value of 0 or the value of 1. So let's now try to look at our small example as a lingo problem or an LP problem to solve in lingo. Here we remember we had five periods and we have a setup cost of 80. So 80 multiplied by delta 1, delta 2, 3, 4, and 5 is this part of the objective function, plus the holding cost of 2 multiplied by the inventory 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is this part of the objective function, and this part is omitted because the, uh, this will be a con constant since, the, uh, since this uh, c variables will have the same value. So this doesn't really affect the objective uh, or the, the best uh, strategy uh, in the lot sizing uh, problem. But if the c variables have different values, this should certainly be a part of the objective function. So now we have seen the objective function. We can see the constraints. This is the balancing constraint, and then we don't have an inventory at the start of the period. So then we have only x1 should meet the demand of 18 in the first period. And otherwise, you will have something uh, stored in uh, inventory in period number 1. The production, the x2 in period number 2, should meet the demand of 30 or it will be uh, adjust the inventory level, the difference between the inventory in period one and period number two, and so on. So this is now the balancing constraints, the first constraints here. Then the second constraints is that the production should be less than or equal to the maximum amount, the sum of the demand in all the periods, 115, multiplied by zero or one. If you are not producing in one period, the delta variable will have the value of zero, and then the x production variable will also, of course, be zero, since it should be less than or equal to zero. But if delta is one, then you can produce more than one, but not more than 115. And at last here, the binary constraints, which says that the delta variables should be binary variables, 0 or 1. And if we try to solve this problem to optimality, we will get a total objective value, optimal objective value of 310, which we remember was the value of the silver meal solution, but also the part period balancing solution. This well, this is more or less random, which solution, because you have several solutions with the same value. Uh, this LP solution will be identical to the silver meal solution. But this is one optimal solution. It doesn't really exclude uh, that there are other optimal solutions.
production in period 1, 3, and 5. The production size is given here, 48, 47, and 20. You have inventory stored in period number 1 and period number 3. So this is the way to define and uh, formulate these type of lot sizing problems in lingo and you can solve them to optimality. <coughs> Uh, so we can now try to look at uh, maybe a larger problem, or we can go through this uh, file. Uh, yeah, this is a definition of the, the help function, where you can find the description of the bin command used in in, uh, in Lingo, which is the binary uh, command that says that the uh, variables should be binary, have the value 0 or 1. Um, then we can see a larger problem we will come back to, or I will. Uh, uh, this is the problem described in, in the textbook. Uh, I will upload, I will probably not get time to, uh, to show this problem solved in the other heuristics, silver milled, least unit cost, and, and part period balancing, but I will upload. Uh, a solution in um, in Frontier, where you can see how this particular problem is is solved. Uh, here you have a k value of 132 for all the periods. You have the d's, which is uh, actually the deltas in my formulations. So here the the small d is the delta variables for the 10 periods. At the right hand side here, you have the demand for the 10 periods, 42, 42, 32, 12, 26, 112, and so on. Uh, a total sum of the demand here is 439. So this, uh, or th uh, this group of um, constraints will tell that the production should not be larger than 439 in the periods you have a setup. And of course, in the period you don't have a setup, you should neither produce anything. So 439 multiplied by 0 will, of course, be 0. And then the production will also be 0. And at last, the binary constraints for all the delta variables. So here we have a problem taken from the, the, the example in, in the textbook, which is now defined uh, in Lingo and where you can find the optimal solution for this particular uh, problem. Uh, so we can also see that the solution, I will also show this, uh, this example uh, in, in Lingo, uh, and we find that the objective value here will be 610.2. Part here is to describe. Yeah, we can have a look at this problem first before we take a break. Um, this has the name lot size, and this is the same. But here I have the the program, and I use delta instead of the d's as you see, saw in the PowerPoint file. Uh, otherwise, it is uh, identical. So you have ten periods, you have the demand for the 10 periods shown here, and we can solve these to optimality this way, and we can find that the delta variables here, you have setup in period number 1, in period number 6, and in period number 9. The i variables is shown below. And the i variables is uh, the size of the stock, which is 112 in period number 1, then 70, 38, and so on. And we can see this in combination with the production, because here we find that the production in period number 1 is 154. And this production should meet the demand in period 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then in period 6, we have a new production which should meet the demand in period 6, 7, and 8. 
and a new setup for production in period 9 for the two last periods. And we can also, of course, see that uh, comparing with the, the demand here, we can see that 154 is 42 plus 42 plus 32 plus 26 plus, 20, uh, plus 12 plus 26. And then a new production setup in period 6, 112, 45, and 14, which is 171. And the production in period number 9, 76 plus 38, which is 114. And the inventory is shown here. So this is now the optimal solution for this problem with 10 periods, which tells us uh, how many uh, items we should produce in each period to get the optimal solution. Uh, but uh, and uh, also as you well as mentioned, I will upload the solution in um, the f with the three techniques: silver meal and least unit cost and, and part period balancing for the same example after this lecture. Uh, then we'll take a break and I will continue because we will now learn some more advanced features with the uh, lingo uh, system, so how we can program and how we can actually define problems, larger problems, with uh, some simpler techniques. But first, a uh, uh, 15 minutes break.